Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this uh, Logitech Reach live demonstration, Q&A, uh, as well as just a conversation uh, about why we made this product and getting into some of the details uh, right there. So my name is Gaurav Pradhu. I am responsible for the product management behind this product. And I'm joined by Grace Lee. Uh, she's the head of design for this uh, product. Cool. Let's get into it. So the flow today that we're going to take is I'm going to walk through some of uh, the thinking behind the product um, through slides. And then after that, we're going to go into uh, a series of demonstrations using the product live so that you can see uh, what the experience is like. And we've built this demonstration off of uh, a lot of the questions that uh, folks have been asking uh, via uh, the survey that we've put out on the website, as well as uh, you know questions that people have had on the social uh, channels before that. So let's get into it. So Logitech Reach, um, before we sort of get into the actual product, if I wanted to take a step back and talk about Logitech as a company. Um, you may know us for the products that we make and um, you know, across the multitudes of uh, audio, video, um, as well as input devices that we're known for. But at our core, we're a design company. And for us, as we're looking at uh, you know, helping folks in their day-to-day -day lives, our core premise and promise is to design new possibilities that can extend human capability. Think about the first time uh, someone used uh, a mouse to be able to interact with the computer, how much simpler that their lives were made. Um, and you know, we've been around uh, for over 40 years, interacting and enabling people to use their computing experiences in a much more easy um, way. And one of the ways that we extend human capability is video. Um, we've been around uh, you know, creating video uh, products so that people can use them in their daily lives uh, from the first time our webcams were in, in the market over 25 years ago. And since then, we've evolved and produced many experiences that people leverage um, in their day-to-day. -day. And you know, right now, we're one of the largest providers of uh, collaborative tools um, leveraging video that people can use in their day-to-day -day lives. And so as we were looking at this video experience, one of the things that we started seeing uh, more recently was as content has become more and more digital, we're presenting slides right now, um, there was still a need for people to show physical things, non-digital content as we may call it. And when we looked into that, um, we saw that this need spans across uh, you know, many use cases in education, uh, content creation, collaborating with colleagues um, in your work, as well as in gaming. And something that we saw was that this video-enabled show-and-tell experience right now is fairly broken for, uh, for most people. You're either starting out having this fixed view where you're taking your content and sort of moving it in flow of your um, display, sort of it breaks up that narrative, or if you want to step up, your next choice is to start rigging together tools um, as an intermediate step. And then your final step up is to do things like have uh, production grade equipment and, be, and, and sort of leverage that and learn workflows and processes around that. So as we looked at this, we wanted to make sure that we could uh, understand people's pain points during this process and see how we could simplify that. And so, the problems that people were facing in this uh, state of being able to show and tell was staying in the flow was really difficult. And like I mentioned, like this is a classic example where you're sort of constantly moving your objects or your content in front of the actual camera, as opposed to leveraging the camera and moving that as you may need flexibly. And then on the other side, keeping your audience engaged is also challenging. It's, it's not straightforward because even a single lapse in that experience, uh, you know, this was most exacerbated in uh, a classroom scenario with third graders where they're not as forgiving as adults may be with each other. Um, but we saw it across the board in these transition moments where you sort of needed to um, have that flow or shot um, and you know, talk through that content was being disrupted 
And so we sort of wanted to understand how we could improve that experience and make that transition and being able to show content that's non-digital uh, much more seamless and much more easy. And so this is where um, we, through many iterations over the last few years, have uh, come to this product, which is called uh, Logitech Reach. Um, this is our uh, foray into this space where it's, a, it's an adjustable camera that allows uh, you to move the camera to the content, not the other way around. Um, and you can do this with multiple axes, and we'll get into all of that when we get into our demos. But first and foremost, it starts with a, a good and great camera experience. And you know, folks that we spoke to and, and researched with, with, one of their first things was like, I just want an amazing camera experience um, that's plug and play, that's straightforward. And, and we built on top of our Logitech Stream Cam, which was a camera that was designed for content creators to be able to show stuff vividly and be able to capture that. And then from here, we sort of built around that with this ability for the product to have expansive lateral range um, where you can sort of pan, slide, uh, move in um, the horizontal plane with ease. And then from there, we learned that one of the most important things was this ability to keep the image upright. And we'll make sure to demo this in the second uh, part of this uh, live stream. Um, but this became a critical component and a crux for the product where it also enabled it so that you can have a singular gesture to do complete horizontal movement, as opposed to needing to do multiple interactions simultaneously. And then to balance this out, we sort of have independent vertical movements. And what this does is enable things like zoom, where it's, it's sort of lossless and you have this ability to have a, a sort of not have cognitive overload when you're showing things. Um, we wanted to make sure that the gestures were simple, repeatable, over and over and over again, where you weren't thinking about this the first time, uh, nor did you need to think about this the second, third, 50th time. And so beyond this, the third experience was this pivoting camera head. And this allowed for very interesting things such as point of view uh, shots. So, so here's what you're seeing um, in that second half of that GIF that's playing where there's that teacher showing a globe and we'll demonstrate that. And so the combination of these three independent uh, sort of movements gives folks a lot of flexibility to be able to demonstrate and show content as they may want. Finally, um, we wanted to start and make this be an extremely simple experience. So to begin with, the product is just plug and play. It shows up as a webcam. It is straightforward to use. And here we're focusing and showing some of the conference room systems. But you can imagine you can use this for your streaming uh, applications. You can use this for recording applications. And today, as we demonstrated, we're going to pick the simplest scenarios so that you can see that it just works out of the box um, without needing to do much. And then as you need to have more progressive, um, sort of advanced uh, uh, streaming options, again, it's just a webcam experience that you can leverage and go as complex as you want uh, with the feeds using the software that you want. And then uh, this component of being able to go from a desktop position to a compact state when it's uh, you know, in use versus not in use, or if you want a more compact view, to capture content. Um, and so the, the product just stows away and it leverages this magnetic attachment um, where the arm uh, sort of sits very easily. And then lastly, um, one of the things that was critical was giving people options of uh, different base types. We know some folks like their setup to have a, a table base um, and then have the ability to um, you know, keep it on their table all the time. Uh, but other folks may want something like a clamp, which is attached to the edge. And so there are two variants of the product uh, that we will be making available, um, one with a clamp base and then one with a table base uh, that you can use. And so here you see uh, that clamping uh, scenario. 
And uh, we designed the clamp in a way that the table base is extremely stable, it's extremely uh, solid, but the clamp, uh, in addition to being that, also takes up the least amount of space where you know, if you have uh, your content area is pretty limited, uh, you can capture that with ease. And so the other component to this was the fact that um, this ended up being a useful experience in all contexts, whether you're showing things in person to a large group of people where you need to amplify that on a screen. Um, you need to do that in a hybrid setting where you have folks who might be in the same space as you, but also capturing it for uh, recording. And then finally, um, in complete remote scenarios, such as streaming or um, capturing your gameplay. And that basically is a summary of our uh, sort of slide where we wanted to get into the actual demonstration of the product. Um, and the way we're going to do it is um, we've laid out some components um, and, and sort of some demo uh, topics to cover. And as we go through each of these demo experiences, we'll sort of pause and make sure that there is um, uh, space and time for questions. So if you see us looking over to this side, that basically is me looking at uh, and, and Grace looking at some of the questions that are coming. So the way we'll do it is we'll do the demo, we'll pause, look at the questions, answer uh, all the questions related to that setup, and then we'll move to the next um, demo component. Awesome. So to begin with, um, I think just laying out what you're seeing here um, with myself and what's on the table. So we've got uh, a Logitech Reach on a table base here, and uh, the tables are basically uh, regular office tables with uh, wheels that we've locked in. Um, I've also got a clamp which is attached to a side uh, mini lectern that is uh, sort of attached down with sandbags so you can see more of a, uh, a sort of wheeled experience versus a more um, grounded stable experience. Um, everything that we have right now is plug and play. So, um, and what we're going to cover, as I said, is most of the time we're going to spend on the simple plug and play experience. And then we'll sort of move into the semi-intermediate because we know we've had questions from folks around uh, if you do need to capture um, and sort of manage some fine tune, uh, some fine tuning, how can you do that? Um, and then in terms of the lighting, we're basically just empowered by office lighting here. Um, and then we have some minimal fill lighting just so that you can see our faces clearly. Um, and then as we go through the demos, as, as I see questions, if there's things around you know, wanting to dim uh, the light down or increase the lighting, we can do that. I've also got uh, one of our uh, uh, products that Logitech makes called the Lighter Beam. If you wanted to see that in conjunction with any of the demos, we can do that. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, so that folks can see this experience, uh, not just from the point of view of the camera, but also see myself or Grace manipulating the object. We've got Tom in the room, um, so you might see him walking uh, around. Um, and that's just so that you can see the experience from me or Grace manipulating the objects. Um, and then this feed is sort of fixed uh, with the ability to sort of pan in and out so that you can see um, sort of when we're doing comparison shots and things like that. Amazing. So uh, to begin, uh, here is the product in um, sort of the stowed away state. And as I pointed out, there's just a simple shaft um, that comes in and you can take that product, put it in, and slot it in and that's it there. Um, you can also move from table mount to clamp and it stays in position. And then when you need to activate it into desktop mode, all you're doing is grabbing that and it sort of clicks into place. So Tom, if you don't mind coming around from this side so folks can see, just sort of sliding that it stays into position there, and then you're grabbing that, and it clicks into place, and now it's in desktop mode. And so now to show you the video feed, so what you're seeing here is the live feed from the camera, and what I have running here is 
the actual QuickTime software on my computer. So it's default. There's no other processing going on. And um, you'll see that the camera just shows up as a stream cam, because that's what it is. And then I've set the quality to maximum. The audio that you're hearing is from our mics that are attached to our body, so that as we move around, you can hear it. But we'll make sure uh, we have a component where, we, where we'll do a recording with uh, the mics from the stream cam so that folks can hear that. We'll upload that recording so you can see it. Amazing. So to start with, and I'm just going to do the demonstrations of the different movements. Um, and uh, between Tom and the feed, we'll, we'll oscillate to show that. So first and foremost, on this horizontal axis, you've got the ability to slide. And the sliding is uh, sort of on internal bearings. It's uh, fairly straightforward. And then there's also a pan and rotate experience. So you can sort of rotate the camera on this axis. And then finally, you've got a camera head that allows for you to rotate. Now, the advantage of these three independent movements um, is that if you wanted, you can get it right into position. But the cool experience is by just grabbing the camera ring here, I can get and manipulate the entire horizontal sliding experience just by gripping this camera ring. And so I can do these entire streams of movement all without needing to do anything else. So I can let go, and that's what the feed is um, in that state. Now, when I'm zooming in, what I'm going to do is position this over these two model cars or toy cars. And what you're doing is gripping this multi-point button experience and pushing it and letting, letting go, and it stays there. And so as I need to position in the horizontal plane, I just move it and let it go. And then this one I can grab from the top, from the bottom. And I'm able to zoom in and out fairly easily or move on the vertical axes with a lot of ease. And so here I've got this on a little pedestal, but I can show it to you on the paper so you can see that. Or you can get in pretty close. And then as you're seeing, the camera's auto-focusing. There's no additional uh, steps needed. But then for folks, if you need to do and manage your focus, say, for uh, something that you're showing, you're not planning on changing the height, um, and you really want it to be that tack-sharp experience, there is the ability for you to um, control that. I think just something else to mention on the control is that you can see that there's a texture around the, mm -hmm. uh, the ring. So um, if you are kind of handling the demonstration and there's a lot of things going on, you can just kind of feel for where yep. some of these touch points are. You can also see it in terms of the, um, the buttons. Yep. Um, that you're, there's a groove there. So you know, as you're kind of feeling around for it, you can also kind of locate your fingers to the right yep. place. Thank you, Grace. And yeah, the, the whole point was we wanted this to be sort of a, an experience that you can do from memory, right? As opposed to needing to uh, think about and futz about with you know physical buttons or or digital buttons in your flow. Where if you need to sort of move it, just move it. If you need to get closer, just get closer. Um, and then finally, uh, this pivoting camera head. So we can do full uh, 360 degrees in this orientation, and sorry if that's disorienting. <laughs> um, and then you can do 0 to 180 on this side. And then finally, the camera ring itself will go uh, a full 0 to 360. But what that means is if I'm trying to do and show you things um, like these figurines uh, or these car, you know, this car example, I can now quickly transition to something else and be able to show that to you um, with a fair amount of ease while having this point of view uh, experience that's pretty uh, unique, which otherwise you may have needed to have a camera that's mounted to your chest. And so we can sort of do things like um, I can hold this car, talk about, and show the details with ease 
Um, and sort of it's, it's in the same orientation that I have uh, as opposed to an inverted view of it or anything like that. And so uh, with that, I'm going to pause and look at the uh, look at the actual uh, questions that we have, and we'll go from there. And then we'll move on to the next component of the demo. All right, what questions? My camera settings are showing. I think you got rid of them. I think I got rid of them. <laughs> All right, thank you. Cool. Uh, next questions for folks, uh, just for our movements. Um, any, anything around the specific movements and what we had uh, demonstrated right now? I was wondering if maybe um, that did get clear, the perspective that you have, that you're showing, yep. and maybe that, that's something that Tom was able to kind of showcase. Yeah. Is like, it's really kind of everything being inverted mm -hmm. is if the, po the cameras are usually pointed at your face. Correct. But the so. fact that it can actually point where you are looking is actually a really um, powerful thing, I think. Um, last check we sh offers. Yeah, let's try that. So, you know, I've just switched to my uh, camera on my computer, and so in that situation, right? Like as I'm sort of demoing it, I'm 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 trying to show you that detail, but it's either obstructing my face, or I'm also trying to figure out where uh, my left or my right is, and you know, I'm either doing this <laughs> and sort of laying that out and trying to point to the actual uh, slider button. Um, and so one of the first questions that I'm seeing here is, are there any Zoom capabilities? Physical Zoom, software control Zoom. Uh, thanks, Larry. So yes, so physical Zoom is exactly what we've been talking about. So I'm going to switch to the camera view. And what you can see here is this is it fully extended out. And then as I need to zoom in, I'm going to pinch that button from the front and sort of zoom in all the way here. And so at this point, you're seeing the actual camera uh, fully zoomed in. And we can get the specs up shortly around um, what that experience is from a zoom amount perspective. So I'm just going to pull that up. So uh, looking vertically down, what you end up with is a 21 and a half inch uh, by 12 inch view roughly. And then when you zoom in, it ends up being a 2.75 inch by five inch experience. And so uh, the second part of the question was, is there any digital zoom? So yes, some of the software um, uh, uh, applications that we have um, allow you to crop in that image further. And so we'll demonstrate that um, later in the flow so that you can see that. All right, next question that we're seeing is, does it come with software that allows picture-in-picture -picture in the webcam viewer an ability to piggyback into the stream? Thanks, Frank. Um, so there isn't any inherent software that we have uh, built into the product, but you can leverage any uh, streaming platform or streaming uh, system that you have. So for example, if you're doing a call in your video conferencing uh, system of choice, um, they usually will allow you to have um, multiple webcam streams. So you can share your view from the camera, from one camera, and then use this as a content camera experience. And similarly, if you're sort of leveraging uh, more advanced streaming software, you can usually have multiple camera streams uh, that allow you to have one sort of be picture in picture, um, and then the other one um, come from the large tech reach. Mm -hmm. But inherently, this is a plug and play experience. The, the, the webcam itself doesn't have um, anything uh, specific. That also relates back to the one question that we missed was, can it also record MP4s? Or mm -hmm. So yes, it, it can. Um, yep. It's not only for streaming, but it does leverages. We don't have any. Um, software that is tethered to this product, Correct. Is, um, you can leverage whatever you would you would wish to choose Correct. for that. So when we do the recording with the uh, to capture the mic test, um, we'll save that directly from the application in that format. You can see it's, it's going to be a recording that you can sort of leverage. Mm -hmm. 
The next question we have is when will this be available and where? So um, watch this space. We're really excited. Uh, we're actually partnering with Indiegogo uh, for this uh, first phase of bringing Logitech Reach into the world. And uh, when you sign up at reachcamera.logi.com, um, you can sort of uh, make sure to get notified um, as soon as we're ready to bring that campaign into the world. Um, and as far as regions, that'll also show up uh, as part of that in terms of where we're shipping. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Uh, next, I think we're going to move into uh, some of the comparisons. And let's talk about the setup differences that um, I have versus Grace has. And um, you guys can see, or folks can see, is a side-by-side -side experience. So what I have running is the Logitech Reach. Um, and in my case, because I'm going to be showing it uh, with a wide uh, variety of uh, things, um, so I'm going to move it further, uh, et cetera. I've, I'm running it with a USB extension um, that I just bought online to show you that that's possible as well. Um, this is a three-foot extension uh, cable. Now, the video quality will vary depending on uh, the extension that you use. And when we put out the specs, we'll make sure to uh, capture that in clarity. Um, Grace is showing it directly connected to her uh, computer, so you can see that experience as well. Um, so you don't actually need the extension in, in all cases. We just wanted to show uh, both the views and both those experiences. And so what we wanted to do was um, capture uh, the same movement and just do it at different speeds so that you can see uh, what someone trying to control it um, looks like versus someone that is uh, being deliberate and wants to move through the transitions quickly. So on the right side, you have me. Um, and on the left side, you have Grace. Um, and so let's go fully out. And then we're going to move from this first image all the way to the third image, which is on the left here. And as you can see, I'm able to uh, hold that image down and sort of let go. And in Grace's case, you saw there was some uh, movement. Um, it's also important to note that these are two; these are all pre-production units. Um, Grace has got a pre-production units that's slightly earlier. Mine is uh, later in the mix. And then um, overall, the functionality is all there. We want to make sure that um, we're as we're getting into the process, we're refining. Uh, these experiences completely. So yeah, so you, this was one movement. And I just want to demonstrate that whole um, keeping the image upright. So in my case, I'm going to uh, not keep the image upright. And Grace is going to hold the grip ring and do that. So in, in my case, I'm just going to use the pan uh, or, or the rotation axes uh, on the shaft. And you'll see what happens. As I turn it, you'll see that this image is not straight. Whereas with Grace, as she's holding that, she's able to keep that image upright uh, just because she's utilizing the movement on the actual grip ring versus all I'm doing is um, capturing the movement on uh, just the rotation axis. So really, this singular grip ring experience does make it so that you can have a much more seamless um, singular interaction on the horizontal plane. Now, in terms of vertical interactions, I'm going to go from the top because I have more arm reach. Um, and Grace, why don't you go from the bottom? Mm -hmm. And we're going to try zooming in. And I'll make sure that my image is straight. And so you can see that you can press that button at different points. And you can zoom in and out pretty easily. Um, and as soon as you let go, it stays there. And the image. Uh, will autofocus as soon as uh, you sort of let that go and interact with it. And then lastly, I think on the pivoting camera head, let's try, actually, let's try pointing at ourselves. And so we can point at ourselves. And so here, here you'll see the image is, there's no uh, sort of smarts or attempted smarts. All you would do is flip that around, and you can see. You can use this as a webcam experience and um, also have that conversation in this way. So the other component there that's really 
uh, critical is I'm gonna, Grace is gonna keep that view. I can actually also pivot it this way and have the experience in a way that I can sort of have this uh, camera coming way too close to my face, but also <laughs> go out a little bit. Uh, so if you did want to capture yourself uh, head on, uh, you can do that and also show things uh, vertically, but you can get very, very close to my face, which <laughs> you know most people uh, wouldn't necessarily uh, want to see for too long. Amazing. Uh, and so the last piece before we move to the next thing um, is we're seeing the question around, can the camera be detached from the sand and be made mobile for more varied handheld positions that are not linear? So there are two ways of doing this, right? One is you can stow this away and still have the camera uh, feed, so I've got it upside down. You can have the camera feed be straight and you can lift it out and sort of have a more, uh, sort of have this armature experience that you're able to move or sort of, uh, sort of use in this way. However, there's no stabilization, it's not a gimbal um, there's no additional stabilization, so it's really going to be limited by your ability to hold um, the camera straight. Separately, um, yes, the camera is actually removable, so you can take the camera out, so it can clip out as I'm showing there, and then you sort of pull the cable out, and you can actually take the camera out completely, and it just clips in. So when, when you receive the product, um, it'll be completely pre-assembled. We didn't want folks to have uh, to deal with that. Um, but you have the ability to remove that camera if you don't want to use it with this. So um, before we move on to the next comparison, I'm seeing some questions. Uh, I do stop motion. Can we lock the focus via software or manually? Um, and then could we do things uh, like use an Apple Watch or Bluetooth shutter control to take single images? Any sort of lighting options, being able to have a control light source on the camera head would help to avoid shadows. Great questions. So let's take them one by one. Um, yes, you can lock the focus. And let me actually try and demonstrate that now. And so uh, the software that I'm going to use is um, called Logitech Tune. It's a free software that you can have um, just download. And then, of course, for folks who are in uh, our streaming uh, communities and gaming communities, uh, the camera should also be available via uh, G-Hub. So you have two options for folks who are just want something far more you know, uh, simple with, with the camera experience. Uh, Tune will let you do most of the simple things straight, uh, in, a, in a straightforward way. Um, and then if you want sort of more intermediate and advanced controls where you want to also layer in uh, with our lights, et cetera, um, you can do that. So in this situation, what I'm going to do is get in close. Hypothetically, that's close. Uh, and I apologize for um, the uh, not being able to demonstrate stop motion live, but um, <laughs> As soon as I hit that, you're seeing that I can sort of turn on, turn off autofocus, and you can manually control the focus. And so then at that position, you can sort of capture that, move the next object in frame, or keep the object there, you know, turn it, um, and do what you need. And then when you're done, if you do need to and so then if you need to sort of change the view very quickly, you can do that as well. Um, but you know, for those fixed scenarios, um, you can leverage the ability to manage that focus automatically or use the manual focus in, that, in the tools that we have. All right. So next question. And by the way, here's that zoom, uh, digital zoom that folks uh, were asking about earlier, so you can sort of sort of it'll automatically you can sort of control that zoom digitally on top of the 
mechanical zoom that we have. All right. Uh, next up um, was your question about additional lights. Um, actually, Bluetooth shutter controls was your second question. Um, so there's no additional, as I said, there's no additional um, hardware that's uh, built into this product. So uh, if you were going to leverage uh, a control to be able to trigger recordings on your computer of choice, it, as I said, this will just show up as a webcam feed. You can do um, whatever makes sense um, in that situation. Um, and then your question about lighting, um, we intentionally didn't put lighting on the product itself. And one of the learnings that we had was um, there is so much variance in lighting conditions. Um, something that we saw was critical was the ability to, if you did need light, to be able to position it uh, however you uh, need to light that scene. So we, we have a product called uh, the Logitech Lytra Beam. We've got the Lytra Beam LX that was just announced. Um, so you can combine those and position it as you need for your specific scenario to be able to demonstrate and show um, in conjunction with that. But what we saw was the light directly from mm -hmm. the camera, in some cases, added glare um, and added uh, a, a lot more complexity into the product where we were trying to keep it super right. simple. Sometimes those additional features actually constrain some of the use cases yep. rather than yeah, make it better. So. Yep. Awesome. Uh, how does it hold up to bumps and shaking? How stable is the base? Um, any image stabilization? Thanks, Jesse. Um, right now, so you can sort of see that experience here. Um, as I let go, if I sort of, and, and this table is on uh, wheels. So if I shake the table, you're sort of seeing, this is me actually actively uh, shaking the table, not too vigorously, but fairly, uh, you know, and try introducing some shake. So then this is what you would see um, in that situation. Um, what you can also do is move it to a scenario where the camera is on a separate surface, just like you would with a tripod. And then in that situation, the surface that you're interacting with would be, um, so you would deal with this, the stabilization from that surface as opposed to from the surface that I'm shaking, right? Then the shake, the only shake that you're seeing would be the actual table shaking as opposed to uh, the product in addition to that. But we've made sure that it's fairly stable uh, in both conditions. It's a, um, it's a metal shaft inside and in both vertical and horizontal axes. Um, and it's got uh, cladding on the outside so that it blends into your environment mm -hmm. with ease. Awesome. Uh, since camera uh, is removable, will the reach be uh, sold separately from the stream cam bundle? Uh, not at this point. At this point, we, we want to make sure that folks just have a simple plug and play experience. And so the product will be sold in two variants. As I mentioned earlier, you'll basically get uh, the reach with the camera pre-attached, and then um, you'll choose between having a table base or a clamp uh, base. Um, and, and literally part of it was when we did some of our early research with uh, folks, there was a lot of uh, questions around just sell selling the mount, just selling the product on its own. Um, and many folks who wanted to move to that next level, um, for them it was like, hey, just give me a full plug and play solution. And so that's where we're starting. And we want to make sure that we can deliver that experience well. USB or USB-C? Great question. Um, so what you have is a USB-C output um, from the product, and um, that plugs into uh, the USB-C ports on your computing devices of choice. Um, and I believe it's USB 3.1 from the stream cam. Uh, but in our technical specs, you should be able to see that uh, pretty clearly. Awesome. I'm going to pause, and we'll move to the next demo. Um, and so in this one, uh, one of the big questions we'd asked was, what's the advantage of reach versus, um, say, something like a segmented ball joint uh, mount where you can sort of lock that view in? Um, and so what we're going to do is a quick demo where I'm going to set up uh, two post-it, two sets of post-its, 
and Grace has two sets of post-its. And we're going to place them roughly here. And you can't see it off screen, but it's to my left and Grace's left. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to move first from uh, the Logitech Reach. And then Grace is going to move um, and show you a fixed view. So you can see um, in Grace's situation, she's got um, a stand that we have uh, from one of our products called the Logitech Mevo, where it's a great stand for sort of static overhead shots or static shots where you need to be able to uh, capture content. And um, in, in the reach case, we've set it up exactly in a similar way. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to hello, and I'm going to zoom in. And just that interaction, you saw it took me a few okay. seconds. Now Grace is going to try and attempt okay. to do exactly that <laughs> um, with the segmented ball joint and be able to get that Hello, be close enough. Okay, so, and so you see, yeah. I'm gonna adjust the height first. Yeah. Let's see, and then which is kind of at the height, but then now moving over to hello. Um, how do I do this? Yeah. Well, I think the easiest way is just to move the entire yeah. stand and, right there. And, <laughs> and so just that there, right? Like I, there is nothing fundamentally wrong with that setup. And, and I think for scenarios where you have uh, fixed shots, where you have the ability to spend ample amount of time between setting up uh, your shots, a, a fixed mount based product is, is great. What we really designed Reach for was this ability to transition between shots and, and transition very, very quickly. So you can stay in the flow, your audience can stay in the flow. So if I now need to move back to high and zoom back out so you can see some of the cars um, or go really close in, just the amount of time that it would take uh, Grace to get back there and also keep it level. Each transition takes uh, 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 an amount of time. Uh, and so we wanted to cut down on that completely um, and offer that ability to, to show very, very quick transitions and just get to talking about the content that you have. Um, instead of spending time uh, sort of tightening, loosening, uh, make, you know, seeing that the height is uh, not quite the same, um, et cetera. Right. And I think it's probably, I mean, the post-its are, it's a good example for this like pretty quick um, uh, demonstration, but I think it's much more important for things that are like you have a bunch of pieces in place that yep. you don't want to necessarily, it's not as easy as moving post-its. Yep. Um, so obviously, a really quick way to move your camera is really beneficial here. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Before we move to the next demonstration, some questions. How heavy is the base? Great question. I believe that number is uh, 8.93 pounds and 4 kilos is the total weight of the product, including uh, the base. From memory, I believe that the base itself is uh, is around uh, seven pounds or seven or eight pounds. So the stand and armature adds around another pound, um, and then the clamp experience, uh, including everything, the clamp is three point three pounds. It's one point five two kg. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Next question, if there are any. Cool. Okay, then in that case, uh, I am going to transition into showing you a uh, globe and just show you how, again, versatile the product is. So before I show you the video feed, you can see me set up. So here I've got a globe, um, and I'm going to use this to talk about the places I have grown up in, and we'll sort of go reverse chronological. So let's see. I'm going to set this up. And then I'm setting up my view, just making sure that that's good. And then I'm going to see the next part of the story that I want to tell. Let's actually place this further back here. Cool. Yep. 
Awesome. So I'm going to show you some complex movements simultaneously. So we are currently uh, based in the Bay Area, somewhere there. And um, prior to this, I was in Chicago. And before that, I was all the way down in New Zealand, which was uh, further down here. So I'm going to move down, pivot the camera head, and show you uh, <laughs> New Zealand. And so just that interaction right there, the ability for me to go through, have a top-down view, and then transition into showing you a view where you're able to slide down, have this perspective. And I can sort of tell you I was in Auckland. And uh, from prior to that, I sort of grew up in the Middle East. So I'm going to pull that back up. And let's actually get more of a perspective view. So I grew up there in Muscat, Oman. And before that, I was born in India. And so here you can see it's adjusting uh, automatically. And I've got, I've got it fairly close. So this is well beyond uh, the normal tabletop zoom scenarios. But as soon as I get it more close, you're able to see that. And it will focus automatically as soon as I let go. And so. I have been fortunate enough to travel and see many parts of the world. But just this demonstration to show you a, a sort of non-2D, like it's not a piece of paper, but a three-dimensional object and just the ability for the camera to uh, be manipulated with ease um, and um, allow for this interaction to be straightforward. Cool. Uh, the next question, uh, so before we move on to the next demo, why use Indiegogo when Logitech is an established company? Great, great question. Uh, for us, it's really about uh, leveraging uh, the excitement for folks who are early adopters and really working with them to make sure that we, as we bring this product into the world, we are able to learn with these folks like yourself who are excited about new innovations um, and for us to have a way to have that dialogue, have that ability um, to learn ourselves so that we are being um, sort of true to our design roots and being able to uh, sort of leverage the expertise and, and, and understand from folks like yourselves uh, to see how you're using the product. And so for us, it's also important to connect and understand the different use cases uh, so that we can make sure that as we're bringing this out uh, more widely, we, we have better positioning. We can actually uh, message this appropriately, really talk to uh, the different audiences in the ways that are relevant and uh, authentic to yourselves. Um, and as we're developing this product and bringing out uh, this into the world, um, we get uh, and to have these sort of interactions and dialogues um, and the Indiegogo platform is you know, built and, and amazing for that, uh, for us to be able to do that with you. Uh, the next question that we have is, can we buy the bases separately to get both, or will there be a package with both bases? Great question. So uh, the default options that will exist is you have to pick one or the other base type. So it's a clamp mount or the table base. Um, and we will look into uh, options where you can separately buy an add-on base if needed. But at this point, the, the goal is to have uh, the main product with one base type. Um, and there won't be a package with both bases um, included in that. Uh, great question, Gregory. Is it made with sustainable materials? We are, as, as you may know, Logitech is very uh, uh, sustainability is a critical component to what we do here. And we are looking into all the different materials to see uh, which ones can be made uh, as sustainably as possible. Uh, there's, there's aluminum, there's zinc, there's plastics in there, and we will uh, release that information uh, once the product has been finalized from a development standpoint. 
uh, but all products within Logitech um, are carbon neutral, and so will this one be, and we'll make sure that the packaging is also as uh, sustainable as possible. Mm -hmm. When will it be available? When does it ship? Great question, uh, Brady. Uh, watch the space, make sure you're signed up to uh, reach camera.logi.com. Uh, we'll be releasing the information about uh, when the campaign's going live, as well as when it'll be shipping uh, as part of that, when that campaign goes live. Okay, next, those are the questions that we have. All right, next demo. Um, we had some folks um, asking us what it's like to draw using uh, the product, and particularly if you need to draw on a tablet uh, or use a tablet and demonstrate the usage of a tablet. And so Grace here has um, a scenario where she's got Mm -hmm. Actually, why don't you talk about it? Yeah, Tom, if you can, Tom, if you can kind of also just show that this is, you know, my setup is not just only about the tablet, but it's about if you can showcase, um, you know, demonstrate something that you are drawing versus what you might be copying or replicating and, and teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the, the, uh, a tablet is really limited to you can share the screen, um, but you can only really kind of share what's going mm -hmm. on the screen. So if you have something that you're referencing, like this is a um, how to draw planes mm. uh, book, you can kind of see that there is, there might be a demonstration of how you might do some underlays and how that might transition over to um, doing into line, drawing into line work. And then so you can kind of then demonstrate like what that might look like side by side. Also, if you zoom out, you can kind of get both perspectives in here. And you can also kind of demonstrate that you might be um, you know, showcasing that you might fill in the proportion first and then the details. Um, and this is something that you can really only do if you can kind of show both, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a non-digital component as well as what you, are, what you are drawing, whether that be digital or analog. Yep. And Grace, you want to talk about like glare, um, sort of ways to mitigate that or, and what you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, so inherently there's just going to be, you know, uh, a glass screen is always mm -hmm. going to have some sort of glare, but you can kind of see, I'll, I'll move this around so you'll, you'll see there will be spots where it ca it's catching the, the lighting that I have above me. Um, but you can really adjust, and this is a nice part of this adjustment, is that you can kind of find a, mm -hmm. um, you know, a shot where it's not, right now there's absolutely no glare on it. Um, so you can really kind of hone in on what works for you. Yes, that's pretty much, pretty much it. Yeah, do you want to show um, it in, in different, so right now you've got it in a flat viewing. Mm. Do you want to see, like show it with a... Yes, so if I were to, um, you can also then show it, you know, show, it at an angle if I'm, this is kind of an angle, and this is probably a little bit more appropriate if I was yep. doing something like painting yep. or whatnot. You can kind of see my hand strokes and how I'm um, filling in certain things, and so this would be another angle of, um, you know, a little bit more getting my perspective yep. um, on the screen or on whatever um, uh, surface that you might be creating your art. Amazing. Yeah. Cool. Any more questions? All right, the next question that we have is, will there be a transportation bag included with the device to make it easy to travel between home and office? Uh, thanks for the question, uh, FP. Uh, we are looking into seeing if we can make the actual uh, packaging that comes with the product uh, be something that you can ultimately put the product back into. Um, but you know, from the previous question around sustainability, we wanna make sure that that Mm -hmm. box that you receive can have multiple lives. And so we're looking into uh, seeing if we can make that box itself uh, something that you can transport uh, or use for transportation if you're moving the device from location to location. But we don't have, uh, at this point, there's no plans to um, sort of include a separate transportation bag. Uh, but if that's interesting, we'd love to get more feedback around that from folks. Um, we, can, we can look into that option uh, right now, the plan is uh, to you just have the box that you get at home, um, and then we'll, we're trying to see if we can make that something that you can use to transport mm -hmm. it. And this uh, is why the Indiegogo platform is so important, so we yeah. can get feedback like this. Exactly. Mm -hmm. 
can I have multiple cameras as well as the reach attached to the same system? Uh, yes, uh, the answer is as long as you have ports, uh, you can connect <laughs> as many cameras as your system will allow you to. Um, so, you know, in, in my setup, I've got uh, the reach, I've got a I've got the camera from my computer that I can switch between, but we can also have multiple cameras coming in. And then really it's just a, it's a function of um, the software that you're using to bring in those multiple feeds, or if you want to switch between them, most conferencing systems will allow you to, to do that with ease um, and showcase that pretty easily. Okay, next question is, oh, same one. All right, <laughs> we will move to the next part of the demonstration. So one of the big things that we'd heard um, in the survey was the ability to use this and um, use Reach to be able to show um, card games and sort of tabletop um, card games. So we went and, uh, uh, you know, our, our teams here are very excited and, and play many variants of cards game, card games ourselves. And so here what you're going to see is um, we bought a standard, I believe, 14 by 24 inch mat. So I just wanted you to see what gets captured in that scenario. So I'm going to lay out some example cards just on the edges so you can see that separated out. And I'll try and go as much to the edge as possible. And so what we're covering, as I mentioned earlier, was you get pretty good coverage in terms of it's 21 and a half inches um, from this side, uh, from sort of side to side at full height. And then uh, you get around 12 inches from edge to edge on there. So you see that in this situation, it's a bit wider. Um, so I'm going to move it up so we can capture all of those so that it shows up in the 12. And some of my desires to make things line up are showing up here. And Grace knows this too well. <laughs> And so here you can see sort of the, the full range. That's roughly 12 by 21 and a half. And if you wanted to sort of bring that up so you can see the full mat, you would naturally, you need to elevate it a bit. Um, but you get a pretty uh, large size coverage. And then again, same thing, you can actually move and show the details. And here, you know, we've just got different um, cards that we're showcasing. We've got playing cards, trading cards, um, and other card-based games that you may have. Um, and so in this situation, I am going to try and zoom in so you can see some of the details and just so that you can capture what is visible. Um, and so part of that question that someone asked was around uh, lighting. So this is a great example where we've got sort of flat cards um, and then more uh, cards with sort of reflections or holographics. Um, and so we've found that having lighting on the product, sure, yes, you can turn it on and off in, in many of these situations, but we wanted to make sure that it was super simple. And so you can adjust the lighting as you can get an external source of light and be able to show that detail. And so I'll leave this. And then we can zoom in even further. And so you can see what that looks like. And so in this situation, you're seeing that the autofocus is taking a little time. Um, and so this would be a perfect example where you can leverage that manual focus. Oh, it, as I uh, decided to show it, it, it decided to autofocus cleanly. And so sometimes all it takes is a little bit of detail. But you can see, you can see fairly, uh, this is pretty tiny text. Uh, I want to say it's less than a millimeter or so, and it's pretty clearly visible. 
And then same thing uh, with sort of holographics. You can show um, the holograms uh, and you get that reflectivity really nicely as well as the color. And same thing there. You can sort of have that color um, shown as you're either demonstrating or as you're playing with your friends. And so this is on a white mat. Um, we can also try and do the same demo uh, on a different colored mat. So I'm just going to transition and show that. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I remember the order. So we've got a black mat here. And I'm going to try and do the same thing. So that's it on a black matted experience. And you can see it was, you know, finding it easier to focus on a black mat. And wow, I have managed to do some interesting things with the cards this time around. Um, so here, zoom out, you can see uh, the certain cards are uh, showing up uh, more washed out. And so here, even again there, if you want, you can actually, if your matte setup is in this way, you can change the actual image adjustments. And so you can change the exposure if you want, sort of make that uh, more exposed to the lighting that you have, or um, you can sort of change the white balance uh, if you want it to be cooler or darker. Mm. And similarly, you have the ability to uh, change the focus so that now I can select, so that's point blurred out, that's uh, fully zoomed in. So now if I want to zoom in on a particular card, this is manual focus, so I can get that pretty sharp. Um, but automatically as well, it will autofocus um, and be able to show that. Cool. So the big thing is going to be as you sort of interact with the plot product and sort of pick your mat, uh, you'll, you'll need to adjust the setups and lighting uh, to be able to do that. We can also demonstrate at some point with the external light source um, how that works. Cool. Uh, that's it on the card demonstration. Um, we have a question which says, can you use it with an iPad? Uh, right now, I believe that iOS, iPadOS 17 has allowed external webcams to be leveraged. Um, and we've tried this, but right now it only works on FaceTime. So it, it depends on the apps that you're using. If the apps will allow it to be um, to work, then um, as soon as they have those APIs to come in, the answer is yes. Um, the newer generations of the iPad with the USB-C. Um, so here, I think the one that Grace was showing earlier mm -hmm. um, was an iPad 10th gen. Um, so it's the basic one. We have plugged this in. Uh, and maybe at the end, we can demonstrate it. I, I do have yeah. a plan to show it with a Chromebook. Um, and so we'll, we can test that. But right now, I believe it only works with FaceTime. And then if you need to show it using um, other apps, the apps have to enable that feature. Will the campaign be going live for funding before the end of the year? Yes. Uh, <laughs> watch this face. As I said, sign up to Logi, uh, reachcamera.logi.com and uh, we'll notify you as soon as uh, the, the campaign's about to go live. Um, and you know, you'll be able to access um, a special discount. Next question. Mm. Okay, that's it on this. Cool. The next demonstration that we had planned was um, Grace demonstrating a product. Mm -hmm. So if you need to show physical objects where you're talking about physical tools. Yeah, so I'm going to just showcase our uh, one of our lovely education products that we have at LogTech called Zone Learn. Um, it's a kid's headset. 
And yes, this is a 3D product. Um, I think this would have been really, this product would have been actually really useful while we were developing this product because we you know pandemic and while working remotely. Um, but as you can see, I can demonstrate really clearly um, some of these like really cool features. Like this product allows for interchangeable or replaceable ear pads. And mm -hmm. so this is an on-ear pad. Um, it easily just screws on and screws off. But you can replace this with an over-ear pad. Um, and I can demonstrate things like how soft this fabric is. Um, we really tuned it for um, the comfort of learners so they can wear this mm -hmm. for multiple hours. And so this is um, the headband foam, which is actually also very comfortable. And we really tuned this to be worn for multiple hours at a time. Uh, you can also see from our little um, charm area where we can actually uh, plug in a shoe charm. Um, like so, to allow for customization. You can kind of see how clear that this is able to show some movements like this mm. um, that would be really difficult, I think, to showcase in, um, yeah, on another kind of camera. Exactly, um, and I think, I think what's interesting is, uh, again, that, that ability to show it from your perspective in the same way that you're seeing it, as opposed to a potentially inverted view. Even if someone was sitting right opposite you, they would be seeing this inverted experience as, as opposed to what you're seeing is what you can show people right. um, with ease. Right, and as you can see, like it, it was really an important for me to, like I can't really show this uh, on a yep. camera um, this way, so to be able to show it from my perspective while I'm doing it was, is, is pretty important. Um, yeah. yeah, this is exciting. Uh, we have a question which is, what is the highest point in inches for the camera above the content being filmed? Great question. Let me see if we captured that on the slides that I have. Um, yes, I believe. Um, so if we can show my slide on the screen. Um, we have right now the dimensions from the top. Um, we'll make sure to get those specific dimensions um, from the actual lens. Um, and make sure that we can capture that. I'm just seeing if I have it in one of my slides. No, nope. yeah, we'll make sure to capture that and put that into uh, specs so you can see the actual point from the camera uh, all the way down. What we do have is the amount of travel that's, uh, that's able to be captured. So you get around 12 inches of vertical travel and then around the same 12 inches of horizontal travel. Um, and then we'll make sure to capture that detail um, and, and put that out there. Will the weighted base have some kind of non-slip or grip to keep it from sliding? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, from a tilted surface, the answer is yes. So let me actually move this to my clamp so I can show you. Mm, good call. And actually, I'm going to show you using reach. <laughs> so let's move here. So yes, this is the uh, bottom of the camera, and it is a pretty heavy, or bottom of the base, it's a pretty heavy base. And yes, this is a rubberized bottom. And so once you place it, it does stay there pretty, um, uh, stay there in place. But we know that folks may want to, um, you know, once they place it, they may want to micro adjust. So it's not tacky. Um, in a way that it will uh, stick, because some of those surfaces we found also, as soon as they get any dust, they become extra slippery. So we've sort of found that balance between making sure that it stays in position and um, it has the ability to um, be moved around just a little if you need to do that micro adjustment and then it stays there. And now the second question I think is more, the second part of the question is more interesting which is um, if you're on a slightly tilted surface like a drafting table. So just to be clear, the product has a 90 degree interaction in it. So if you were to tilt it um, at an angle, these sliding mechanics would sort of slide automatically. So it does need to be on a pretty level surface. There's no middle point um, within this product. Now, what you could do is have it be within the um, sort of stowed away position. 
and then at that point you can have that be mounted. But really you would see that the arm is also tilted. Um, it would be pretty hard to use it in that situation on a uh, flat desk. Cool. Let's see. Uh, there was a second part to that question that I may have missed. Do you remember what, the, what that was? I can, yeah, catch it. Cool. Um, the next thing I think we wanted to demonstrate was fabrics. There were a lot of people who asked about um, showing fabrics on the product. And so what we have here is we got two quilted pillows. Um, just to show you some contrast, I'm going to lay those out uh, just so you can see the color contrast and, and how much detail can be picked up um, by the product in showing that. So as you can see, you should be able to see the stitch work. And I want to say that the fabric or the actual threads here are maybe a millimeter thick. I don't know what that is in, in it, inches. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it's, yeah, I don't know about inches. Um, but it's, uh, this is uh, sort of that level of granularity or detail. You can even get lower um, and sort of see the actual individual thread um, work. And then same thing like last time. So see it's autofocused and you're seeing all the fibers mm -hmm. um, come in and out with a lot of granularity and detail. Right. I think the contrast is also very good in terms of like showcasing the colors. Yeah, the colors and then even just the stitch pattern, right? Exactly. So here you can see the underlying fabric texture as well as the stitched fabric. And apologies if we're not using the right term. Um, <laughs> Neither oh, of us <laughs> I, oh, embroider. <laughs> no, we do not embroider, but um, I do, I have been making some products uh, for my pet at home. Um, Embroidery? And I, uh, no, like leashes and like oh, nice. dog collars. But uh, yeah, this was far more complex in terms of the intricacies. And as you can see, it's catching that uh, with a fair amount of ease. Um, and again, if not, you can adjust that autofocus and turn that into manual. But right now, it's, uh, that's it under autofocusing. Mm -hmm. Great. We have a question around pricing. So yes, uh, just as I was mentioning before, um, sign up at reachcamera.logi.com um, where we will be announcing both pricing and availability um, as soon as the campaign goes live. And we look forward to you know, seeing uh, you then. And you can see the range of pricing that we have uh, both for the campaign as well as projected MSRP for the project. Cool. Uh, the next thing I wanted to check, if there were any other questions, where can I pre-order it? Uh, great question. The product will be available on Indiegogo uh, when we launch the campaign. Um, that's where you'd be able to pre-order it. And we're very excited to partner uh, with Indiegogo to be able to bring this product um, to early innovation seekers like yourself. And so again, sign up at reachcamera.logi.com and then um, we'll notify you um, when the product becomes available for pre-order um, when we launch that campaign. Excellent. The next thing that I had, uh, where can I buy it? Sorry, there's another question. Where can I buy it in Mexico City? Um, right now, the product is not available in um, any physical location, um, and we will be announcing the availability of the product uh, as well as the areas that we're going to ship with the Indiegogo campaign. Um, and then subsequently, when we do bring it out into the world um, in regular channels, we'll uh, make sure uh, to let you know or let folks know when it's available in which parts of the world. Cool. The next thing that I had was actually uh, to do a demonstration of a mic test along with a uh, video capture. So right now, you're not able to um, hear this. But what I'm going to do is do the recording live so you can see also me recording a clip. We will um, record that and then make that available um, for folks to be able to see the visual quality as well as um, the audio that the mic's capturing. And so let's try this out. All right, so I'm going to make sure that I set 
the camera to stream cam, and then the microphone is also set to stream cam. And then I am going to demonstrate the pouring of a beverage. And so let's try that. So I'm going to try. So first I'm going to set record so we can see that happen. So that's recording just in the native application. And so that's there. I'm going to try and pour that in without failing. <laughs> and we're going to move that out of view. And so hopefully, with that being captured, I'm going to stop share, stop recording. And I uh, will upload that. And so you should be able to hear and see the actual audio clip as well as the video recording from that. Amazing. There's a question which is, what is the email address you keep saying? Uh, it's, thank you for that question. It's, uh, it's actually a website which is reachcamera.logi.com. We'll make sure that that's uh, flashing at the end of the live stream so you can go to that website and sign up there. Cool, we're almost at the end um, of our demonstration. Uh, we're about to show two more things. Uh, the next one that we're gonna do is food. We had some folks uh, wanting to see how uh, food looks um, and what we can do there. So I'm gonna just save this file, excellent. Thank you, thank you, Mark. I'm gonna Move that. I'm going to make sure to save this file. So let's escape. Save that file. And we will make this mic capture. Cool. And so now I'm going to try and demonstrate food capture for recipes and things like that. Uh, let's go new movie recording. All right. Let me make it full screen. Yes, let's make it full screen so folks can see. And so as you can see, we've got a lovely bowl of fur. Um, and you can sort of see. That's the broth with some of the lighting. And I'm going to try and put some things into the, into the actual bowl. And let's actually see if I can even, so there you can see, you can even see some of the steaming. So the camera is able to pick that up um, as the bowl is warm, uh, the actual steam coming out. Um, there was a question about the actual impact of that steam on the camera lens. I'm going to try and get pretty close and see how that fogs up or doesn't fog up the actual liquid. And so far, it's pretty good. But uh, the, the lens is glass. It's not, the, the system isn't waterproof. So I would say um, I wouldn't dunk it into water or do anything like In that. It's, it's, it's just meant for regular usage, but um, as you can see, I'm going to try and see if my chopstick skills are at point. So to put that in there. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> and add in those components and see what that looks like. There we go, two jalapenos and some bamboo shoots. And yeah, that is it. So then if I wanted to replace that, we can do that. Great. We have a question from Suzanne, which is, does it have scanning capabilities? Uh, the answer is uh, the camera is, again, a very simple, straightforward camera. So you would just leverage 
apps that you have to be able to do things like scanning. So if you're using um, software like PDF software, or if you're using um, software that allows you to um, uh, do the actual scan, like the take the scan and then uh, do optical character recognition, all of that is possible. But in this situation, all you would do is, you know, if you had a piece of paper, let me find my piece of paper, and I'm actually going to keep this, and let's use the range of the product. So I'm going to demonstrate here. If this is the actual document that you wanted to scan, you can either take a screenshot directly from the system. So I'm going to try this. Come on, shift three. There we go. So we've got a screenshot right there, and now that's ready to use. So you can just leverage the actual tools um, within the system, and then if you have specific software that you're using for scanning, you can do that. But just a screenshot, and then be able to do what makes sense. All right, the next question that we have is, since the reach just sits in the base, is there any attachment or way to connect it to a third-party standard tripod? Uh, for example, if you wanted more height to a stand. Great question, Carrie. At this point, the answer is no. We've actually looked into some of that, but many times um, what we found was when you are this far out on the actual product, and um, maybe Tom's view will be better to capture it, there's a lot of leverage that's being put on this arm. Um, and so what we found was having tripods um, directly, like you needed to add additional weight on those tripods, hence we designed these two scenarios. Um, and then the other thing is, um, one of the ways that we've seen, and we're you know, excited to see how people will use this, you can always clamp, use the clamp, attach that to the tripod, and then use the camera within there. But as I said, in our testing, when we, we, we found that um, when you put it out all the way, it, it, it can be uh, sort of non-balanced. Uh, and so you may need to then mess with weights, et cetera. But again, an experiment that will be uh, interesting uh, to see how folks use this. Um, the next question we have is, what are the camera specifications? How is it different to the Logitech Stream Cam? So the answer, um, let's answer it backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, the product is powered by the Logitech Stream Cam. So this is an actual Stream Cam within the actual product. So there is no difference uh, when it comes to the camera experience uh, from the actual optics and things like that. Um, and then as far as the actual megapixels, um, my understanding is that it's a, uh, let's actually get you the specs. It, like we'll, we'll get you the actual specs and we'll make sure to publish them. But it's, it's identical to the stream cam, so whatever the stream cam specs are, are the same for the product. I just don't want to misquote the specific megapixels. Uh, but what we've seen is you can do 1080p up to 60 FPS. Um, again, identical to the stream cam. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then the last demo that I had planned was to um, connect it to a different device. Um, so I'm going to try and plug it into a Chromebook um, so that you can see that experience and see it play out. And then we're going to. We'll see if the iPad works after this. Right. So I've got the camera app open on the Chromebook. So I'm just going to move the feed over so that you can see the view from the Chromebook. So this, you're seeing the live screen of the Chromebook. And I don't want to shut down. I'm going to move the Logitech reach, and this Chromebook has two USB-Cs, and the, if you caught that, the <laughs> mini truck went into the fur, <laughs> so that's going to be interesting for later. Um, but let's then, and in the Chromebook, I'm just using the camera app, and so here you're seeing this is the actual uh, camera from uh, the Chromebook, and you can just switch and select. Um, the different camera options, and the reach shows up as a, like a camera. And you can see it's got flip mirror mirroring on. You can just take that 
and be able to demonstrate directly. So this is just plugged into the Chromebook and we're using the native Chromebook app. So here within that Chromebook app, it allows you to take a photo. So for the, the previous person that was asking about screenshot, like Windows has the same set of features. They've got a camera app where you can capture that. You can sort of zoom in, zoom out. It should autofocus in the same way. And um, you can then take videos. And actually, your scanning question, these, there you go. So you can actually place a document. This was the demo flow that I had written out. So let's see. So cool. And then I can go scan that. And there you go. It is actually going to scan that image. And it'll automatically create a PDF, do whatever you want. And this is just native within the actual operating system. Amazing. Uh, can Logitech work with major social media platforms to make Reach play well with their web-based live setups and, any possi and possibly their apps as well? Uh, that's a great question, Kurt. We'll, or I hope I pronounced that properly. Um, yeah, like we, we'll absolutely look into that and see if there's anything specific needed. Um, but as far as we know, as long as you can have a webcam going into those platforms, it should work pretty mm -hmm. seamlessly uh, mm -hmm. without needing anything else. But we'll, we'll make sure to look into that um, to see uh, what may be needed and then look into that detail. Awesome. I think if there's no more questions, we are just waiting to see if there's anything else. If not, I think that comes to, that brings us to the end of our demonstration for today. Um, we're super excited to um, share this product with you, share this demonstration with you today. Um, and we're looking forward to bringing the product uh, into the world. And as I mentioned uh, a few times on this conversation, <laughs> Uh, make sure to sign up at reachcamera.logi.com and um, we'll notify you of when the product is going live on Indiegogo um, as well as um, the availability, the pricing, and we'll make sure that any of the questions that folks had around the specifications, we'll publish all that uh, and make that super easy for folks. Thank you for joining us today. We're glad you were able to join. Yeah, thank you. Uh, looking forward to seeing you digitally. Thank you. Bye-bye now.